Mike, what's taking so long? <laughs> Why are you dressed like that? I thought we were doing the Queen video today. No, this Queen video isn't about Freddie Mercury. But we are going to help celebrate the 50th Jubilee of Queen Margrethe II of Denmark by giving you 50 facts about Denmark's beloved Queen. Now, while I wipe off this mustache, let's head over to Derek at Amalia Book Palace. Her Majesty the Queen was born on the 16th of April, 1940. She was born right here at Amelioborg Palace in Copenhagen. She's the first child of King Frederick IX of Denmark and Princess Ingrid of Sweden. Her title at birth was Her Royal Highness Princess Margaleta, but to her friends and family, she was better known as Daisy. The new princess was named after a powerful woman, Margrethe I, who ruled Denmark and other Scandinavian countries from 1375 until 1412 under the Kalmar Union. She was born one week after the start of the German occupation of Denmark in World War II and became an immense symbol of pride towards the resistance. Her mother, Queen Ingrid, made sure that she had flags of Denmark, Sweden, and the UK in her windows in the nursery, and also she would go on walks around the town in a baby carriage, again being a symbol of resistance. She was an only child until the age of four when she received her first sister, Princess Benedicta, and then at age six she got another sister, Princess Anne-Marie. Her youngest sister, Anne-Marie, became a queen herself in 1964 when she became the Queen of Greece. She only ruled for three years as in 1967 the royal family was exiled and by 1974 the entire monarchy was abolished in Greece. Her Royal Highness Princess Margrethe grew up with royal cousins as well, including those that are now the King Harald of Norway and King Carl Gustav of Sweden. And she's also the great-granddaughter of the UK's Queen Victoria. So despite this distinguished and royal pedigree, her Highness was not actually eligible for the Danish throne. Because only males could inherit the Danish throne, her uncle Prince Knut was actually the heir presumptive. In March of 1953, that changed with a new law passed in the Danish parliament, allowing queens to ascend to the throne, as long as they had no brothers. The brothers part was actually struck down in 2009. In 1958, at the age of 18, the heiress presumptive was given a seat on the state council, and she chaired the meetings in the absence of her father, the king. In 1960, she traveled along with the princesses of Sweden and Norway to the United States. This included a trip to LA where she actually met celebrities like Elvis Presley and Dean Martin. Besides representing the crown abroad and her constitutional duties, the Queen studied prehistoric archaeology at Cambridge. She also studied political science at Aarhus University in Denmark. She also studied at the Sorbonne in Paris and the London School of Economics. Her mother tongue is of course Danish, but she also speaks English, French, Swedish, and German. Thanks to her love of languages, she actually has worked as a translator, translating several works of literature into Danish. Another passion of hers is archaeology, having participated in excavation digs going back to when she was only 12 years old. Over the years, she's participated in archaeological excavations in Italy, Egypt, Denmark, and South America. This interest in archaeology was likely sparked by her grandfather, King Gustav VI of Sweden, who participated in an excavation dig with her in 1962 in Italy. On October 5, 1966, a grand declaration was made from the palace. The future Queen of Denmark was engaged to be married. On the 10th of June, 1967, the entire Kingdom of Denmark rejoiced as Princess Margaleta married Count Henri de la Bois de Montzapont. The ceremony took place behind me at Holman's Church in Copenhagen. The couple gained immediate popularity with the people of Denmark, and their wedding was celebrated by millions. The groom was given the style and title, His Royal Highness Prince Henrik of Denmark. The royal newlyweds spent a lot of time together, especially at Prince Henrik's vineyard and property in Provence, France. After one year of marriage, Margrethe and Henrik welcomed their first child, Prince Frederick, in May of 1968. A year later, their second son was born in 1969 with Prince Joachim. Both Frederick and Joachim, and their children as well, were all born in Copenhagen's Rijks Hospital. The future queen served her country in a different way by volunteering for the Women's Flying Corps from 1958 to 1970, rising to the rank of lieutenant. She's always pursued art as one of her passions, becoming an accomplished painter and holding many art exhibitions over the years. In the 1970s, her art gleaned the attention of J.R.R. Tolkien, who invited her to provide the illustrations for the Danish versions of the Lord of the Rings novels. She used the pseudonym Inge Hild Gottmer as she did the illustrations. On the 14th of January, 1972, King Frederick IX passed away, making Margrethe Queen Margrethe of Denmark. At this point, she became part of one of the longest lasting monarchies in the entire world. The Danish monarchy can be traced back to Gorm the Old, believed to have been born around 900 AD. 
Margrethe II became the first female monarch of Denmark since the reign of her namesake, Margrethe I, 560 years earlier. Her Majesty declined to have a formal enthronement ceremony. Instead, Jens Otto Klegg, the Danish Prime Minister, gave a formal address from the balcony of Christianborg Palace behind me. Upon the announcement, the crowd gathered below gave a ninefold cheer of hurrah! In her first address to the people of Denmark, the new queen read, My beloved father, our king is dead. The task that my father had carried for nearly 25 years is now resting on my shoulders. I pray to God to give me health and strength to carry the heavy heritage. May the trust that was given to my father also be granted to me. Although her role is purely ceremonial, she still has an active role in government in that she meets every Wednesday with the Prime Minister and Foreign Minister. Queen Margrethe also has eight grandchildren. From Crown Prince Frederick and Crown Princess Mary, there's four. There's Prince Christian, Princess Isabella, Princess Josephine, and Prince Vincent. From Prince Joachim and his first wife, Countess Alexandra, there's two sons, Nikolai and Felix. And then with his second wife, Princess Marie, there's two more in Prince Frederick and Princess Athena. Sadly, Queen Margrethe lost her husband, Henrik, in February of 2018. Each year on New Year's Eve, the Queen addresses her people from the palace right behind me at Ameliaborg. She delivers a New Year's speech, and in 2020, she broke from tradition and also delivered a speech to address the nation during the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic. But what's next for the monarch? After designing the costumes and sets for eight Danish ballet productions, it was revealed recently that she's been employed by Netflix to design the set and costumes for an adaptation of a Karen Blixer novel. All of this at age 82 and while celebrating her 50th jubilee this year in Denmark. And if you enjoy hearing more about the royals, make sure that you check out this video right here to find out inspiration from Princess Mary on how to actually live in Denmark amongst the Danish people as a foreigner. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hi, hi.